Hi guys, welcome to Begging for Balance. Um, I am just waiting on Denise to join. Denise is from Family Canine Training. Uh, we're both dog trainers and we like to do Facebook Lives together. Uh, here is Denise, hold on, let me see if I can add her. Says Adam. Hang on. Hey Denise, how are you? Hey. Can you hear me? Are we good? We are good. Okay. Um, so I was just starting to do a little intro. Uh, Denise is from Family Canine Training in Orlando, Florida, and I am from Begging for Balance Dog Training in Upstate New York. And what else? So if you're in those areas and you need dog training, um, even if you're kind of outside those areas a little bit, uh, you can contact us, Denise, at Family Canine Training. Is it FamilyCanineTraining.com? Okay. And I'm at BeggingForBalance.com. Um, you can also check out our Facebook pages. We have Instagram um, and our websites and some YouTube videos if you need some free videos. Um, Let's get intro? started. Not that great at doing the intros. Um, so tonight we're going to talk like about like oh, your finger. Awesome. <laughs> like anyway, Denise has a finger injury. In case you're wondering, you think I can't like on some physical therapy on that thing. Um, so tonight we're going to talk just about our favorite, some of our favorite dog products, you know, being in this dog industry, you find little things that make life easier with our dogs. And we thought that it might be nice to, uh, share I'm those excited. with you guys too. Um, obviously, yeah, it is going to be fun. Um, Yay. we want to just give a little disclaimer that like these products, we're not guaranteeing these products. We are not uh, being paid by any of these companies. Right. And if your dog has a medical issue, you need to figure that out with your vet first. But there are some things that um, are sort of like first aid medicine stuff that we might talk a little bit about um, what we've found helps mm -hmm. us and, and our dogs and stuff. So, CYA. Uh, <laughs> what? I said CYA, cover your. Right. I mean, it's just, I would think it's common sense, but, you know, we're just a couple of trainers here talking about dog stuff, so, and what works for you us. You know, with the good stuff, I know you have something good to show us. What's your top, yeah. what's going to be one, what's going to be number uno? What you got? Um, something that most people don't know about is this doggy don't. Most people, this is not, like, you're not going to find this in a store, and most dog owners don't know about this. I'm going to tick um, off these are, dogs right now. If I press that, I'm going to be like, what? You have one, too, yeah. Um, so, uh, there are two things. This is a pet convincer. This is a doggy don't. They kind of do the same thing. Um, it's like a noise aversive. So... These can be used for like stopping your dog from like jumping on the counter or if your dog is reactive or things like that. But what I like to use it for mainly is keeping away off leash dogs. So when I'm walking my dogs, um, if an off leash dog comes running up, I have a loud button. And this sounds like a taser. Taser. If I if I do it on here, it's probably going to sound like beep. It's not going to sound as intense as it really does in real life, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I know it's going to, it's probably, this is not really fair, but um, I yeah. want, I want the viewers to be able to see it. So, <laughs> so maybe it sounded as loud as it does in, in person, <laughs> uh, but it is loud and it's usually enough to scare most dogs away. Um, so it works really well for that. And it also works really well if you have a dog who's like incessantly barking in the crate, you can even press this. I have pressed this in my bedroom with dogs like 
far in the other room in the middle of the night barking and just beep and yeah. that's it. Nobody I'm not gonna press I have eight dogs here. I'm not gonna press so, it. Yeah. So it doesn't always work, but it's a good deterrent for most um, for most off leash dogs and you can actually press and hold this for a good amount of time and it will continue to to go. Um, and I've had a couple off leash dogs that I've needed to use it just like a few times and then they run away. Uh, but this has a battery. I, don't know if I, can... I forgot if it comes with it. It comes with the battery, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, the battery's in it. Um, I think it does. Come I've had this for over a year and used it a lot. Like, I mean, I think a lot, but uh, I've not had to replace the battery yet. So it's pretty good. Yeah. I can't get it open and I don't want to break it. So um, <laughs> this is called a doggy don't and you'll, you'll have to order this online. If you're interested in one of these, I actually recommend most of my clients get these and walk with them, stick it in your pocket um, and keep those off leash dogs away. And the pet convincer is basically the same thing. This just makes a loud burst of air and I don't have any, I don't have a cartridge in here, so it just sounds like an air compressor. Um, and it also keeps off leash dogs away. It works for um, hi Mary. You know, you have a, like if you have a, if you have a reactive dog, you can kind of like hold this behind your back, point it toward the dog, and mm -hmm. when they're just about to explode at another dog, you press mm -hmm. it, and it's enough to distract them and keep them from. Mm -hmm. Um, from you know reacting and this has cartridges <laughs> Mary she carries a two foot broomstick handle <laughs> whatever works you know some people walk with a yeah. walking stick uh, yep. mace if it's really bad you know you need to have yeah. something in case something goes bad um, this has little cartridges you have to replace these and my the only issue with this is that I've been caught several times with an off-leash dog, and this doesn't warn you when it's getting low. Yeah. And so when you're on the end, it just goes, <laughs> it's like, you know, very anticlimactic, and you point it at the dog, and nothing happens, and then you have to, you know, you have to use your foot or whatever to keep that dog away, and it's... Uh, that's the only downfall of this. But this can also be used for um, quieting the dogs in the crates and stuff too. These come with different nozzles. Like they have a, they have a yeah. shorter nozzle that goes in here. This yeah. one is longer, so it gives you a little louder burst of air. Um, I like the longer one. Yeah, I like the one that comes with the long one. It's called just like that pet convincer. If you search it on Amazon. Yes. Yep. It's like a blue, red, whatever pocket yeah. comes in a yep. plastic, hard plastic or something like that. Yeah, 30 yeah. bucks. And then a box of cartridges is going to cost you 19, 20 bucks for 16 yeah. grams of uh, uh, the, the cartridges. And this is a little more, but I like it because it lasts, the battery lasts a little longer. Um, I don't know. It's just like a preference, whatever. Either of those are good, but I thought this was interesting to show because you can't really right. find these at the store yet. I hope that they do start selling them in the stores um, because it really would be good for, uh, you can also get, if you don't see this in your stores, you can, they usually have like, you know, the smaller pet stores, even I think maybe Petco and PetSmart, might sell. There's a little can of compressed air that's called Pet Corrector, and that's just like a little, more like an aerosol can. Um, that's going to run out sooner for you, and it's not refillable, um, but it works just the same. So it comes with a little cap. If you're going to use that, I recommend that you take the cap off when you put it in your pocket because you don't want to be fooling with like trying to get the cap off and dealing with a dog that's coming at you. Um, Hi, so, Jane. Anyway. All right, Denise, let's see you share another, share something that you've got. Mary says, lots of loose dogs here, but mostly me walking toward loose dogs and me being the aggressor works. 
Great thing we were out walking and a dog came out into the road. The dog ran right back into his yard, says Linda. <laughs> I'm just getting some of these way later. Like, I don't see them. Jess oh. says, hey, can't stay. Okay, now it's, it, everything's yeah. coming in really late for You're me. So. Well, Hi, girl, you, I'm, the, I'm, the queen, I'm the queen of poop. If y'all didn't know, you know now. <laughs> My favorite <laughs> poop bag are earth rated. I like these um, scented ones, lavender. And okay. I'm an old man. I'm an old nurse. We always have like this thing with pens. So now that I am training dogs, I have this thing with poop bags. And this is, so I have a, I have like, I have a system. I have a system, you know, I've got like a little bit of OCD. So I have a system. When I go for a walk, like, like, you know, my front, through my front door, like here, like my neighborhood or a pack walk or something, I have multiple dogs. I use these because Couple things, couple things, couple things. And this one I'll use in my backyard. I'll leave it hanging in the little thingy that it comes in and I'll use them to pick up in my backyard. But if I'm on a pack walk or leaving the house here, multiple dogs, or I'm gonna probably have a lot of poop bags from that one dog, <laughs> I'll use this one with the handle. These are the ones I recommended to Elias. Bags on board, baby, from Hand Armor with anti-yuck protection. Listen. <laughs> okay. Honey, these are so thick. You know, like my nails grow really long. They have, but I haven't grown them out in a really long time. So I've been training dogs and like gardening and stuff. You can't, you can't rip it. You can't get your nails. You know how many times? Oh, um, I'm gonna poop in my nails. You know how many times? Or <sighs> this is huge. It's like 15 by like. 17 inches or something. It's huge. <laughs> so if you have a collection of poop bags, you can stick them in there, you know, oh, and, and, and you have your, your handle to, to carry it with, you know. Good idea. So it is big. And <laughs> um, that's why I like it. So according to the environment, I don't know. Some, I don't know. Amazon. They have all sorts okay. of places online that you can get them they are and thick. what were the other what were the other bags those are lavender the, the earth, i didn't say the name but um good earth okay. i'm gonna do a comparison <laughs> i love the way these smell so you get like this lavender scent and you're like oh it's not so bad picking up the poop <laughs> earth rated so i mean you okay. can see the difference i don't know they just look bigger maybe the handles i don't know i'm gonna try to show here the best i, I can. actually went on a on a hiking trail today and they had mutt mitts i think was what the bags were called and they were super heavy and like two ply double like it was crazy yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are good. I like them both, and I have, like, you know, options for when, especially pack walks of multiple dogs. Either these that or a bring up a margin bag. These That's are not do. fancy. Yes, I just use oh. these out ones. They come in all different colors. Where do you get them? And, um, I don't know if I ordered these. I think I ordered them. I have a lot of them. I don't know. They smell good. So. They're not special or scented or like extra thick or anything, but and you don't get residue in them. I like that idea of having a thicker bag and one with handles when you have multiple dogs out there because it is a pain. I usually stuff bags inside of other bags and then tie it all up like and carry one huge one. But or take that's a another idea. as a dupe. Yeah. So you got to talk about everything. We have to talk about poop and that's like one of the major things with dogs. So you're going to take care of dogs. You're going to have to deal with that. Poop is life. Yep. <laughs> so, what you got next? Um, we can talk about some toys real quick. Um, 
some of these I use a lot and some of them like other people have recommended to me or whatever. This is a Kong Frisbee and it's really strong. So the dogs can like really pull on it and they don't rip it. And uh, it's, I've had a lot of dogs that have really enjoyed playing with this um, when they come through board and train. My dog, Lana, likes to kill it. She just, you know, like, takes it. <laughs> she would rather do that than chase it. Yeah. Uh, the training dogs, a lot of them like to, to catch that frisbee. And um, this Kong, these Kong bones, it's the same thing. It's made out of that hard rubber like the, like Kongs are. But then it has these ends where you could put something in here. Like you could put peanut butter in there or something like that. Uh, cream cheese, let them lick out of the ends of it. Um, if you had some sort of biscuit or something, you could stick that in there. Um, yeah. And then this is another favorite. This is the Kong. I don't remember if this is called the Kong stick or what, but it's uh, Ooh, it's freaky. Oh, everybody just jumped up. Yeah, I know. Everybody just jumped up. Moose just, Moose just jumped out of a dead sleep. And then he's like, oh, we're going to play. Uh-huh. So, but this is like hollow. So, you know, they can get this Nothing pretty muddy. Nothing to see here. Go back to bed. <laughs> muddy and dirty. And, you know, I don't let them, like, chew on it a whole lot. But for, like, retrieving and just playing and stuff, it's, it's good. Because the squeaky gets them excited. And then I can do some retrieving with just about any dog, you know. That was Kong them. too, right? That one? That was Kong? That's Kong, yeah. Yeah, that's Kong too. And, um, you know, you can find that Is at like heavy? PetSmart or a Is it heavy? pet store. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. I liked it because I figured they can't really chew it. You know, they can't unless you give it to them and leave it, leave them laying with it. As long as they're actively doing something with you, they're not gonna, they're not gonna hurt it. So um, that the jolly ball is always fun. Dogs yeah, can I got grab it. Um, you can you can kick it for them, so that's really fun. Um, <laughs> see, I told you, I just messed up all the dogs. They've all been being really good, and I just squeaked that and and uh, messed them up, but they can bring this back to you. It's a big ball. It's a little different than, um, you know, just a smaller, uh, you know, like tennis balls or those types of things. Um, tennis balls are fun. I do use tennis balls sometimes, but I've also heard something about tennis balls. The glue that's in them is bad for dogs' teeth long-term, so... Um, I've kind of started switching over to the chuck it balls instead of just regular tennis balls. And these are good. They're good in the water. Um, they have, I have yet to see a dog really chew this and break it up. And, you know, they're pretty, these are pretty strong. Um, they come in different sizes too. So you can get small for the little dogs. This is a medium sized one, which is like for your average dog. And then they have large ones. Oh, that's the Kong. Um, cool. That's fun. No, it's Chuck it. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Chuck it. So, does she like that? Yeah. You got the medium one too. And I like these because it has grip. Yeah. Is that a medium? That's a medium. Yeah, I'd say medium for, for most dogs, unless you've got a really big dog, like, uh, you know, some sort of massive or something, then they might need the bigger one. A dog with a really big mouth. Um, but The Jolly yeah, Ball, what I didn't like, um, it has a hole in it, right? And for the, as far as the swimming pool goes, uh, yeah. it'll pick up all the, all the water and you have to... Oh. Every so, ever so often, uh, squeeze all the water out, and you yeah. do have to squeeze the water out. Otherwise, they'll get mildew and and, and dingy. I've, I had one over there that I had to take away, and uh, 
and I just threw, I tossed it because I have plenty of uh plenty yeah. of balls. I must have just found a location in the in the pool area and got dirty. Yeah, that didn't. But um, yeah, this one is my mom is saying, and they don't pop it. Is this what you're talking about? That they don't pop? Mm -hmm. They can. Some dogs can actually like chew the heck out of those <laughs> jolly balls. Mm -hmm. So um, they will. They will really try though. They'll they'll try. Um, you know those. They also make those for horses. Horses like to uh, pick them up and fling them around and play with them too. The handle. Um, so, so do you know what that one is called? This one, chuck it, chuck yeah. it, tug. Chuck it, tug. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And I've seen those with just the handle on one side too, like just the ball and the handle, and not a second ball. But that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's uh, they can play tug with each other with that. It's so too heavy it's... for the chuck for the chuck it stick. If you uh -huh. pick it up with the chuck it stick that I have right here. Somewhere, yeah, I have it right here. It's too heavy. It'll I have the stick right here. It'll fall off. So this truck is stick that comes with the tennis ball. I don't really like my dogs playing with tennis ball. They're bad for the roof of their mouths. My dogs will tear it up, pick up the stuff, and eat it. The the stuff that yeah. it comes with. So I don't use the tennis ball that it comes with, but I use mm -hmm. the stick. And I have so many yeah. of these. And I got them in a. I got them like a free or cheap deal. Back when I was doing those, uh, you know, real stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, like, you got other toys? Um. Oh yeah, I've got a. This is a tug. This is a fire hose tug. It's really dirty and terrible, but it's been well loved and used. Uh, this is a Kitty's bumpers fire nice. hose tug, which is not like the greatest but how I found this at a local huh how many years have you had that maybe like a year oh or less <laughs> it's not that long it's just very well used um so this is pretty uh sturdy it's a good tug with two handles um and this is like this is like I said a fire hose um, you can get fire hose tugs. There's, you know, uh, you can find a lot more online. This is the only tug with two handles like this that I could find locally at a pet store. And that's why I got it. But, yeah, I don't know. It seems like all the really good pet products, <laughs> the stores locally do not have. No. So I don't, I really don't get it. And I don't, uh, it's like a lot of the big box, like pet stores sell things like prong collars, but they sell the cheapest, you know, not really good quality ones. Why don't they have the good quality ones? <laughs> it would make life a lot easier to be able to just run there and grab something. Yeah, they'll sell the they'll sell the prawn collar. That's a whole different story for another day. Yeah. They'll sell the prawn right. collar, but they don't believe in in training a dog with one. <laughs> right, but, but they know. have the cheapest, pointiest, you know, like sharp edge one that you can get that's going to fall apart. And I don't know. Anyway, we're not yeah. on that subject. But oh no, these <laughs> all peaches and cream and roses. Um, I think that's all I got for toys. I've got another so one. You got another toy? Dun, ba, da, da. Beep, beep. Oh, that's the Kong. I don't remember. Is it a Kong Wubba? No, this one doesn't squeak. This is for the water. So it's called Kong Wet Mojado. <laughs> so. The dogs go crazy over this. I got one side eyeing me right now. They go crazy over this. The color. I really do believe that things colored like this, yellow, green, orange. What colors do dogs even forget? They really love this <coughs> toy. They I don't know. Really they can only see these. a few colors. I can't remember which ones. Me neither. They love this toy. They call and I, I get these on dog.com. 
they have them in lots of places, but they've hmm. got like small, medium, and large. So this is what my golden retriever and what my lab uses. So, you know, so what from, size is that one? That's how long it is, huh? What size is that? Shoot, let me see if it says it on the tag. Because it goes by inches, I think when 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 you buy it on the on the um uh, on the line on nope doesn't say but I'm pretty sure this is hmm. like a medium and large I'm pretty sure okay okay. Yeah. I'll have to get one of those. Moose is uh, enjoying the swimming, it. and I would like to see. He didn't do that well with the ball in the water. He, he will. Was just, like scarfing so much water down with it while he was grabbing it. He did better with a stick, but I would try one of those. Maybe he can grab onto those like ribbon parts of it too and just haul it in by that. <laughs> yeah, he will. He's meant for it, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, he's so meant for So is that it. just like a regular Kong inside there, or you don't know? I It's like a, a plastic. I My dogs rip one up. So I I know so it's, it's in not, there. It's, it's a probably plastic. not as hard as the regular Kong. No, no, because like it's, it's not that rubber. I mean, it's nice rubber, but... They haven't been able to tear it into it yet. However, they did tear up the this the the yeah the fabric. fabric. Yeah, and uh, if you dry it out correctly, you'll have no problem with this toy. It doesn't get um, uh, what do you call it? But it can hold the the water a little bit because this is that you know that material. But they love this toy. Cool. They go nuts over it, and the and the frisbee too. Um. The chuck it frisbee, I like that. Because if all of these guys float in the water, because when you buy these toys, if you buy when you buy the chuck it toys, most of them have a, a water sign on it. It'll tell you if it'll float or not on the. Uh, on the, the is that what is the chuck it frisbee like? Is that flexible? Is it hard? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. Is so it like fabric or rubber. Yeah. Material mostly, and then the ring, like a like a foamy, rubbery type. Easily, they can easily tear it apart. Okay. And it's like eleven to thirteen dollars, girl. You'll be buying them, uh, but the dogs love them, so it's up to okay. you if you want to cool. dish out the yeah. thing. Yeah, I like um, you know, I like to interact with my dog with the toy. Yeah. I like the toy to be more than just an item. I like it to be something that we connect with. Like it's an actual um, interaction with me with that toy. So I'm part of the fun. They're not just taking it and, you know, destroying it and having fun on their own and that's it. Like it's a little more special if you have a few really good toys that you take out and you play with them and it's like, a, you know, a routine and it's a lot of fun. Like, Lana loves tug. I get that out and she just goes into like, oh my God, it's time, <laughs> you know, but yeah, but that's a good time to practice like, you know, some of the obedience stuff too. Like ask them to sit, ask them to wait, throw something and ask them not to just go after it. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. anyway, so toys, yes, you can let them just have them. Um, and do whatever with them, but it's also nice to really interact with them with the toys. Yeah, so. I didn't bring out the amphibi, amphibious, amphibious, uh, um, amphib what's that called? The bumper, the, the new ones that I have. Amphibious bumpers, they love them. What is that? I don't know what it is. <laughs> a little, oh shoot, I have it outside. Oh, just like a, like a retriever's bumper? Yeah, they're the they're, they're on my picture on when he's swimming when Muppet Muppet has it in his mouth. I got, they came in the two pack, which I didn't and it, know. Oh, I know what it looks like. Okay. With a string on, on the end. They love those. You could okay. toss them pretty far. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. 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 Um 
So what else? Let's talk about I don't, just treats. You, oh, go ahead. I don't have toys. I was just saying that. You're all done with toys? I don't have any more toys. Okay. I don't either. Um, let's talk really quick just about treats. I don't do a lot of treats, but there are times when I need something more high value than just the dog's kibble. So if I need something more high value than their kibble, um, probably one of the most high value things is this, breed stride liver. Um, and this is a really good product. Like, you know, it's healthy for them. It's just little dried chunks. They're not that small. It actually comes in pretty big chunks. I cut this up in yeah. tiny pieces or like break it up and just give them a little tiny piece like this. Um, you want to limit the amount of this depending on your dog because they can get diarrhea from it. So well, I yeah. do a lot of times if I need, if I need like a high value thing like this, I'll cut it up in really small pieces and I'll mix it in with the dog's kibble. And it takes on the scent and like, they don't know what they're getting. You're giving uh, them uh, something and a lot of times they don't know if they're getting a piece of the liver or a piece of their food. Uh, but this is pretty high value. Um, Stewart's Pro Treat, 100% beef liver. So um, that's one. And then uh, something else I use is this is actually sushi paper that you can buy at the grocery store. And this yeah, is a really healthy, it's a really healthy food for dogs. Um, it's salty, so you don't want to give them like a ton of it, but it comes in no. sheets. Um, just Growling like you. Who is? Yogi growls um, when certain people walk in. Oh. Okay, um, so it comes in sheets, and I just break it in tiny little pieces like this. I mean, you can do like little teeny tiny pieces, but seaweed smells like fish, and almost every dog I've ever had loves this. And so these little tiny pieces, they don't get sick from it because you're only giving them a little tiny bit of it, but they think it's absolutely amazing. And um, this uh, is super high value and fun for them. And it's also, if you have a dog, like if, if a dog was on raw food, um, you know, this would be something that you could give. It's dry and it's just seaweed. Like there's nothing else in it. Uh, if you're not giving a ton of it, you know, it's not. Um, can you put up the packaging? So maybe they like, hold it up and they can like near somebody else can screenshot it so what what do you think would be the amount that you would use total like a little handful uh like um, i mean i don't or... usually use i never would use really more than like half a sheet of this so i might use like you know and that's like for the whole day <laughs> you know half a sheet of it and i don't you know i just use whatever i need try to keep it a small amount because like I said it, doesn't have, it does have sodium um it doesn't have I don't think it has added salt it's just roasted seaweed that's it um but I read about this being like a superfood for dogs it's healthy for them just like it is for us what's the, what's the sodium content on that it's a ton Denise it's a ton 20 milligrams in two sheets. So that's oh, not that's really. Great. Yeah, it's not a lot. Um, I'm not like super looking so at that sheets, because I don't right? feed a lot of it. Each yeah, it sheet. says in two, two sheets, 20 milligrams. Perfect. Sodium. So it's. Not bad. I mean, For you don't want to give, you don't wanna give like tons and tons of it. It will stick to the like the roof of their mouth and stuff if you give it in big chunks, <laughs> and they could like choke on it, you know, if you gave too much of it. So tear it up in small pieces, but it's easy, and you know you could keep that like you could keep that stuff in your pocket, and it's dry, and it's not gonna, it's not, uh, you know, gonna stain your pocket or something. Uh, 
That's fantastic. Then, I remember when you first told me about that. This is not a product that I necessarily love, but I have used this before. Um, this is an organic chicken, little, like, it was little meaty, you know, pieces. It's got chicken, sweet potato, tomato, vegetable glycerin, cranberry, blueberry, egg, salt, gelatin, and uh, vitamin E and ascorbic acid. So, I don't know. They were kind of soft, and the dogs seemed to really like them. So, that is Play-Doh Pet Treats. Small Bites. Uh, and I think I got these... I don't know. Sometimes I keep my eye out on, like, TJ Maxx or something like that. They, sometimes they have um, pretty good stuff there. I got those. That's a oh, awesome. Cool. Are those like canvasy or what are they rubber? What what is the red part? Thick old thick uh well material. Thick Okay. Thick uh uh polyester no. No. What's the it's probably like a canvas, no? Let me read the the, the thing. Material only. Lavage a la main. That means washed by hand. Um, where are the materials? Made in Vietnam. Don't know. This this is like rubbery. Yeah. Rubbery, rubbery things in the end. And yeah. I think it goes all the way through, and then this piece covers it up on top. This is the same material that the Frisbee has. And then the uh -huh. cord in the end, you can fling it. Yeah. Cool. These were winners in the bowl with everyone, even Muppet, who is not excited by many toys. Cool. So they all like that. Yep. Um, so what do you do about treats? I don't know, but you can tell your viewers. <laughs> well, I have those liver ones, and I've had uh, somebody get the runs from it from one. Yeah, one. Yeah. My luck. Uh, peanut butter, I like. And whatever I've got here in collection, as far as like, I have ones that are mixed in with like uh, either like a, a pumpkin or cranberry or some. Healthy, you know. <laughs> what is that? Ice cream, yogurt? What do you mean? What are you calling me out for? <laughs> what the heck did he? I should have been like, we're on a Facebook live. <laughs> is Carlos giving you that? No. It's just sitting there. <laughs> Treats. That's what Denise does about treats. She eats ice cream. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> speaking of treats, um, if your dog's not eating, this is what I do with the salami, like deli salami that you get from, you know, the deli cold cut. If you have your dog's bowl, food bowl, I like smear the food with salami and like rub it you get that scent in it works fabulously so they think they're eating salami but they're really just eating their regular kibble and they don't get diarrhea <laughs> bonus mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. i do that all the time so if i'm going to put it in my treat bag i line the treat bag so it doesn't get all oily and stuff I'm like, yep i line it or I'll plan to wash it or something. Because as yeah. you're feeding dogs and you're going to feed other dogs, like I don't like cross contamination of any kind. So I'll yeah. line it. And then if I have, but I have multiple bags now. So I can, yeah, pick, you know, put one too. bag to the dog and then wash it later. But still, I just rather yeah. line it, put a bag, whatever kind of bag, doesn't matter. Yeah. And that's it. Half of the time, I don't like using treat bags for that reason. If I put it in my clothes or pocket, I just throw it in the wash and it, you know, takes care of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, let's see. What else? Ooh, that can eat. Um, I have a couple bowls here. Slow feed bowls. So if you have a dog that scarfs down their food, um, you can feed them out of a slow feed bowl. They have some that you'll find at a lot of stores that are just like four sections. And those barely slow the dogs down. They can still just like, <laughs> you know, they just scarf. Yeah. It's no different than eating out of a regular bowl, really. Um, but these are actually really good. These will slow down dogs. Um, these are Outward Hound. And you just put the dog's food in here, and they have to really work at it to get it to get it out. Um, it has a rubber rubber grip on here, so it's not going to slide across the floor. And uh, they come in different sizes. This is a really big one. Um, oh, I like that. This is a smaller one. Um, but they're both. Is it bad that I'm eating this ice cream? I can't. I just. No, just keep eating it. That's good, Denise. It's so good. Um, bowls. Oh, this, uh, we use water buckets in the kennels. So these are just stainless steel water pails. Um, this is another interesting thing is like if you go to the store, the pet stores, they only sell these little bowls that attach to the side of the crate. And it's like this big. It's a little tiny thing. Maybe it's like eight ounces of water or something. But, you know, dogs a lot of times need more water. So um, these are the ones that I use. Most of the crates, this is a one quart size. Uh, I think I got these on... Maybe dog.com. Yep, Some that's where I got order, mine. I'm not sure if Chewy has them or not, but uh, one quart is like regular size. I don't know. That's what I use. Uh, some of the dogs need bigger, so um, two quarts or three quarts, depending if they're pretty big. I have a four quart one, and that's huge. That is like, you know, if I have a horse come in here, we'll be good. <laughs> it's pretty big. Um, did you have a horse? Why did you get it? If I, if I get a horse in here, then I'll... Um, I didn't think it was going to be that big. I wanted to order a two-quart, and they were out of it. They were totally out of stock, and I needed a bigger one. So I was like, oh, all right, they have the four-quart. I guess I'll get that one. Um, but... Then you just hook a carabiner on here and clip it to the crate. So that's how we do the water buckets. Um, and they're less likely to mess with this than if you had just a regular bowl on the floor of the kennel. If you put just a regular dog bowl in there and put water in it, most dogs will eventually fool around and spill that mess all over the place. What do you think? Spill those. Yeah, they'll still spill those. But ding, you ding, can ding, put ding, like ding, a, ding. Yeah, it depends on the dog. You really got to test them out and see. And um, I do have, like for my bulldog, I do have the little bowl that I think I got at Tractor Supply. Um, it's a stainless bowl and it comes out and then it has like a, there's a metal bracket that attaches to the crate and it slips in there and stays. And it's a regular bowl because he can't fit his face in here. Like he's got a short nose, so it doesn't, unless the bucket is full, he can't get water out of it. So um, so he does have the little bowl one from the store. Um, I leave that one in for Tig, but I give him his regular bowls. But I leave that extra in there just in case because yeah. when he does, he starts swimming in it or tosses it. So... I, yeah. He has, like, three bowls. Right. <laughs> it's fine if it's full. Like, if it's full, then mm -hmm. he's good. He can drink out of it. But once mm -hmm. it gets lower, then he can't get it, and then he'll he'll just spill it all over the place trying to get it. And Anyway. <laughs> yep, um, even if he's carabinery, he'll find a way to screw it up. <laughs> right. So what else do you have? Okay. Pet hair. This is my favorite on um, like, if I had to give all this stuff up, 
See, I like my interrupters that we were talking about, you know, the pet convincer and stuff like that. But this is pretty close to be the, the thing that I probably wouldn't give up. <laughs> king Canine makes the King Comb. Right? And then these two things. They have a lot. I use these two together a lot. So this, and most likely if you get something like this, you're going to be on heavy duty anyway. This is the, the, the dish for, for dish shedding, the dish shedding tool. Right? Yeah. And you can stick the blade in really low to get a nice, uh, uh, it looks like this blade is, I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but so far this has lasted me. You can put it in real low, you know, and, and do your de-shedding or stick it out, right, for longer hair and stuff. But this is everything. So this has dual purpose. Don't quote me on it, but I use it dual, you know, in two ways. You can use it on the dog, the rubber end, right, for the massage to get all the hair out. Both of them work for Max really, really well, depending on what area of his body I want to get. And I just pull mm -hmm. out hair, pull out hair. It takes a lot of work, I think. He just has a he sheds a lot more than my golden retriever, more yeah. than a shepherd. Wow. I think. Huh? Just to give you an idea. So this, even though um, there's some wear on it, I've used this thing like crazy on furniture on like the car carpet. So this, this gets the hairs that are stuck. And this will get the hairs out that you just see, like bunches. I'll tell you what this is and where to get it in a second. So this is the King Comb. And I really don't know the website, just Google that, King Comb, with a K, both. Um, I know a lot of people use the Furminator. I've never used it to compare, but I do like his. Um, I have that. I have it. And I'm an over user with this. And for them not to be like falling out of here, that's pretty darn good. Especially like if you're going to get the car mats, I you know, end up using both. I'll start with the green, this green one, and then finish off with, with this thing. Uh -huh. if, if you're on Amazon and you search um, carpet brush or carpet broom. I actually have one of those, I think. Yeah. This is rubber bristles because you know like yeah. those little gloves that you use for cleaning rubber gloves? It's the rubber that picks up the hair. So yeah. these bristles are a little bit longer, a little bit looser. So they're not going to do the fine job of these little nubs. And I know that there's little blocks online if you don't want to get this there's little blocks online that have these but i don't know how strong they are depending on how they're made how the product's made so this one will catch since it's loose bristles it'll catch the 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 longer or the not so stuck hairs yeah eh? huh. this is great on like the couches and this yeah. this one came with an actual broom that i can use on the floor because if you have tile, I have tile everywhere in the house, some uh, wood in the stairs and the upstairs hallway. But even if you mop, you still see hair. You can mop twice, two, three times. And yeah. this picks up a lot of the broom part of it, which I have on the on the on the floor. So it's the same thing as this, but bigger, longer, and it's got yeah. the same uh, dust guard. It's the same thing, uh -huh. as, you know, and it's um uh, comes in a broom. It's a little flimsy. I think I had to tape like the top part, pulling it out because it comes and you think it's like three or four feet short, but it actually extends. Huh. So I have it there. Uh, get one of those brooms, the camera. Oh no, I can't flip the camera. I have to flip you. Oh yeah. So. Hmm. <clears throat> Love it in combination with the other one. Like, I wouldn't be able to use this one alone because it doesn't yeah. do that fine job that I'm looking for <laughs> of this one. I want to see this all one. the hair is gone. I can pick it up with that. Yeah, cool. 
Mm -hmm. I don't have one of those. I'll have to get one. The, I have the Furminator. And it's okay. Like, I, you know, it does pull the hair. It does pull a lot of hair out. I've used other, like, brushes and rakes and things on dogs and, tr and tried to get as much hair out as possible. Um, and then I'll use this and still get more hair out of them. And this has this little, like, button that uh, helps to um, release the hair out of here. Um, so that's cool. Hey, Paige, how are you? Um, we're also hoping that anybody who watches will uh, include, you know, any products that they have that they really like. Um, you can comment them even after this. If you're watching it on the replay, you can comment, like, if you have something that you love that you, your dog really loves, let us know because we want to know. Um, oh, I'm going to eat this cleaning. whole thing. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I'm going to eat this whole thing. Denise really likes that. Um, is that caramel or what is that? Oh, God. Burger. Caramel <laughs> <laughs> That's Denise's pick for the ice cream. <laughs> um, cleaning, since we're on the cleaning, this is what I use for potty accidents. Um, nature's miracle. So I clean up as much of the mess as I can. And then I always, I have this in a spray bottle. Um, do not dilute this if you buy it. Keep it just like it is. Um, huh. I spray it on full strength, let it sit, and then, um, you know, wipe up any of the excess. But you want to, and if you have, like, fabric and something gets on it or the carpet or whatever, you know, you want to, like, blot up as much urine as possible, get it all out of there. Then saturate the carpet with this stuff and let it dry. Um, I always tell clients when you have a dog that goes to the bathroom in the house, if you're not getting rid of the urine odor, the dog will continue to mark on that spot. Uh, they have like hormones and stuff in their urine that they can smell. Even if you put all the chemicals mm -hmm. in the world over it, it doesn't get rid of it. So this has enzymes in it. Um, and I think it's mostly like <clears throat> alcohol. I don't know. Um, but there are enzymes and that's what takes it away. So it smells kind of like alcohol. Um, and maybe it's like ethanol or something, but, um, this one has kind of a mild citrus smell too. Um, and it helps to get rid of the urine. And I like just the regular formula. This is pretty much basic, regular nature's miracle. They make a million other ones. They make like some marking one, which I did not think worked at all. Um, my little dog Mac used to mark and I tried that and he would still mark on it with the marking, <laughs> the nature's miracle for marking dogs. And I was like, what? Uh, but it didn't have, I don't think it had all the alcohol in it. It had some other scents and I don't know what was in it, but um, just the regular straight up Nature's Miracle. Um, or like this one is Nature's Miracle and it's specifically for dogs. But um, Paige got the like wishy washer. She says she loves it. Paige, you use that even on the grass and it won't kill the grass? Yeah, is that for, that's only for outside, right? Or do you use it inside too? Like, would you use it on the carpet? Mm -hmm. I haven't used that. I've heard of people using it that have like turf, um, but can you use it on regular grass and can you use it on carpet? I'd like to know some more. Um, yeah, Elias told me to use older band. I didn't like older band. Okay. Does that have enzymes in it too? I don't remember. I didn't like it. He's used it with bleach. I'm like, yeah. And you know, I have a lot of dogs all the time. 
If something yeah. works, then I won't be able to smell stuff, and I can smell everything. Right. If there's one little cranny with diarrhea, I can smell it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I use it on cleaning crates and my epoxy floors. Huh, cool. Okay. Awesome. Where did you get it, Paige? Do you buy it online or did you get it in the local store? I want to know the details. Yeah, we need to know the details on all this. Um, what else? Let's keep going. So, how about your first aid stuff? Do you want to show that? Yeah, and I'll continue with the cleaning. For cleaning so ears, cleaning. well, for the dogs, for cleaning okay. ears, I will have to check the bottle about the carpets, but it doesn't smell strong, and it's supposed to be very safe for dogs. Cool. Cool. If you buy that, you'll be spending some, some money, I think, though, initially. I like this for the ears. I love the smell. Can you I hold it closer to the... I don't know if it's the greatest. The second ingredient, it's water and um, alcohol. I mean, it's supposed to be a drying liquid, though. That's the purpose of it, because mm -hmm. dogs with floppy ears who, who remain wet, um, I haven't seen any type of reaction or any issues with it, and I love the way this smells. I just do. I love it. And... Um, I think I've prevented ear infections and yeasty with this stuff. I swear by it. My dogs go swimming. They get this stuff in their ears. Okay. Love it. And I get, I think I got that? Chewy. Chewy. Chewy.com. Okay. If right. Since we're on ears, this is what I use. This is not like, this is not going to dry up. You know, it's not like for water or whatever, but, um, this is an enzyme ear stuff that I've used. Like my bulldog has ears that just get really, he just has like gross ears from time to time. Um, and whenever they get gross. Show it again. To get stuff, huh? Can oh, you put it up? Um, we used to get all different ear solutions and medications and drops and things from the vet and everything. And it never worked. It would never clear it up or whatever. And this stuff, um, his ears, if you started using like rinses and ointments and things, they would just get more and more inflamed and it would just make it worse. So this, um, it does have hydrocortisone 0.5% and that helps with the inflammation. And then you don't clean the dog's ears. So this, you just fill up the ear canal with it. Like, you know, massage the ear and leave it alone. You don't do anything with it. So especially if you had a dog that was, like, really difficult to handle, some dogs will not tolerate their ears being messed with. This would be perfect for that because you just put it in and you don't have to do anything. Like, you just leave it in and you don't clean anything out of their ears. It's more based on, like... um bringing back like a healthy environment to the ear. So it kills, and the little pamphlet says it kills like yeast, bacteria, cures like infections. Um, and even like on the little paper, it said even like MRSA, this kills lots of stuff. So it's an enzyme. Um, and it's MRSA. called Zyma. It's expensive. I think it was like 25 bucks for this little tiny bottle. Um, but you use it for seven days. So once a day for seven days, and then you don't need it. And here's it clears it up, and then you shouldn't have another problem. So, um, and after using that, his ears will be good for a long time and not have an, not have an issue. And if I smell, like, if they smell at all, then I'll just put mm -hmm. some in there just to make sure that, like, the balance is, is good and everything's good. Um, That's pretty good without a script. Yeah, it's not prescription. And um, I've gotten this in local pet stores and also mm -hmm. online. So 
So yeah, I do. I do like you know. I do buy a lot of things online, but I also like to tell people to go to their local, like smaller pet store because we want those places to stay around. Like I want to be able to go somewhere and see the actual product. I do not want to only buy things online. So we have to support uh, some of those little, those you know, good small pet stores. So, what else? What do you got? You got spray? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, great. You got a huge bag. This is Denise the nurse. Here she comes with her bag. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Let's see. Medical kit. <laughs> yeah. I like this stuff from the Pet Smart line, the hot spot spray, even though you can use like if you look into it, like tea tree oil and stuff like that, if you're into essential oils. But for the people who just want like quick purchases, liquid bandage. I love this. Paige gave us a, just real quick, Paige says um, wizzywash.com and save $35 with this promo code. Whoop, whoop. Um, lasts like about a year. So good tip. If you need that, check out that. About a year? So, using it how often? Huh. $135. Um, I got that stuff for the, the that um, Michelle, Michelle Stegmeier posted in our private trainers group. And I got the um, reading for the fly population. Because, you know, everybody has it. It's a continuous problem. But I don't want to be like... predators. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to be like the huge contributor to it, but every summer it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's a huge problem for everybody. And they go, I think it goes like 100, 150 feet. So I take care of mine, the neighbors, you know. So I'm waiting for it to start affecting and let you get back to you and let you know. I like this for clean wounds. You can get that at Walmart. Okay. Any scrapes and stuff like that. Keep the area clean. Um, some vets will recommend betadine, iodine. That's not always good for all wounds. Oh, that's the hot spot spray still. Liquid bandage. This is just another kind. I like the other one better. The same brand as everything else, which is uh, Essential Pet. That's the one the that you like? I like this one. What's, what's as far the as the liquid called? bandage goes. I like this one. Oh, I don't this know is why. liquid bandage. Okay. And this yeah. is what you sometimes spray on the prongs. Um, yeah, the hot spot spray and the and the and the liquid bandage. But severe allergic reactions, it won't stop it. They'll get like right. the hard patches underneath the skin. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And I have a, a hydrocortisone spray for any itching, itchy paws, and that'll that'll you know as you guys know if something's itchy and they keep licking it. It's going to turn into a hot spot. So if you can help them out with the cortisone spray, you're really, you know, you're providing some relief for them. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, stuff I kept with my dog, we get hot spots. She's on raw now and she doesn't get hot spots anymore. But I still use these things. They go crazy in the pool for hours and they'll, in the raw their their paws up, especially in the back, because she swims in, pushes off the wall. As she's pushing off the wall, scrape. Mm -hmm. That's why I have all this. Stuff. Yeah. That's my, yeah. You my never know. Problem. They're gonna they're gonna have cuts and bruises and things that they yep. just they're rough and tumble. So they definitely things happen. I um actually have this product that I sometimes use. If anybody has like a spot where the hair isn't growing back or, you know, they have a cut or something, I, this stuff is for horses and cats. It's safe for everybody. It smells terrible. It smells absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's sulfur <laughs> and pine oh, oil, yeah. but it dries on the wound and it keeps it from getting like anything else in it and they don't like the smell of this so they won't lick it they don't want to like mess with it the dogs will just like leave it alone so if somebody like um 
you know, my bulldog sometimes would get like cysts between his between his toes or something like that. So screenshot it if they need it. Yeah, I'll show it. Um, so it's called New mm -hmm. Stock. And it's definitely like if I have to use this, I will basically keep the dog like crated so that it's not getting all over my furniture and rugs no. and all that stuff because it does smell. But um, yeah. a couple of days on like a wound and it's healed up and it helps the, it actually helps the hair to grow back and it keeps like, it'll keep bugs out of it and stuff. Um, you know, very nice. I'm, it's like a barn, barn ointment. Um, so that, and then, oh, this also, um, our bulldog has a part of his neck where he has like really thick wrinkles and in there he has a place where he doesn't grow hair. And the vet said like, it probably will never grow hair there. There's not much you can do. So yeah. he doesn't have collars on. His neck is just like, you know, open and stuff. But I wash him with this. And this has helped both with his feet, with the cysts between his feet and with that neck, like it will get yeasty or like it'll stick together and then get just like wet in there. Um, this is Duoxo. Oh, cool. That's how you say it. Chlorhexidine shampoo. Um, and I buy this on Chewy and you put it on like while they're in the tub, you put it on and you let it sit on there for like five minutes and then you rinse it. Um, and between that and then when he's totally dry, you can't read the name of which one. <clears throat> what? She says she can't read the name. I don't know if it was this product or the one before that. It's okay. probably backwards. I'll go, she's gonna... I'll go back. I'll go to this. D O U X O. It's it's gonna show backwards because we're both on selfie mode. Oh, uh, well, that's terrible. And this is called New Stock. N U S T O C K. You would have to flip the camera and like you know face it the other way, but and either way, can't. she could screenshot it and you know. So, and this is Duoxo Chlorhexidine Shampoo. Um, so this helps with like, you know, if they have fungal infections or bacterial infections of the skin or whatever, this will help um, to wash them with that. And I think they also make a rinse that you can use after you shampoo them. <laughs> but... Most dogs don't have, like, all those skin issues. And if your dog does have a lot of skin issues, you should really look into, you know, their diet. Could be an allergy or something like that. Um, bulldogs are, like, no notoriously terrible skin issues. So, um, just something we have to keep in check. What else? Is that all the medical stuff you got? Yes. Fun stuff. Uh, other fun stuff. I like this travel water bowl. It doesn't hold a lot, but it's helpful for like the beach. It doesn't get sand in it. Keeps it very clean versus one of those collapsible bowls. Stay much, yeah. much cleaner. Uh, my sister got this uh, for me on, I think, Wish. <laughs> Something I don't usually recommend people using, Wish.com. And you, when you squeeze, the water flows in there. This is like my fave. Easy to put away. Cool. You hang it somewhere. The the dogs come and nudge it, and you know when they want some water. <laughs> I I love this 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 thing. I really cool. do. I don't have one of those. That's neat. Um. All right, let's do bathing. I guess like. Shampoo. Yeah. Um, right still now, I like my shampoo. I'm going to try. Has, has not found hers yet. No. This I like for dogs with like longer hair. Um, that looks very fancy. Like, it's Paul Mitchell for dogs. 
Oh, it is J. Paul Mitchell. You weren't J. kidding. J. Pat, Paul Mitchell. It is Paul Mitchell? Yeah. Oh, it's Paul Mitchell. Mitchell. You weren't Paul kidding because the other day you asked me what shampoo you use, and I'm like, I don't know. I have all these shampoos, and I don't like them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Testing what? on humans first. You I don't fancy. know. I mean, this is not a natural. This is not like if you're looking for like the most natural product, this is not. Yeah. But it does make them shiny, and their coat is really soft, and um, you know, it smells good. I don't, Denise asked if it holds the smell for a long time. I don't know. I mean, to me, they all start smelling like dogs again. <laughs> but, yeah, the, I like it. Um, I think it smells good. And I've also, they seem to, even if they have sensitive skin, it is made for sensitive skin dogs. And it seems to be uh, pretty good. So I like that one. And it's oatmeal. I'm going to try the then, shampoo for these guys. Oh, you weren't done. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Go, we can, this is just a, this is a lavender one. Lavender shampoo. Natural chemistry. Lavender shampoo. All chemistry. With natural lavender oil. Um, I don't know. Maybe this is a little more natural than that. I, I do also <laughs> like, um, I used to get a Burt's Bees Lavender one. And I really like that. And then I couldn't find the Burt's Bees Lavender anymore. Um, and this is a shampoo that I used before that. So I just went back to that. Go ahead, Denise. Let's see what you got. That paw... This well, live is really good for replay viewers because they could just scroll for all oh, the talking crap. Let's go for it. <laughs> I'm going to try the shampoo by these people. Perfume. I love. If you guys are watching this. You got to hold it up me. closer. Hold it closer. To the I corner. will. I will. If you guys are watching, I tag you guys on Instagram. This is the mom.com. <laughs> Perfume. I have. Blue. This is happens to be blue ribbon. And then the other scent that they have, I'm not sure if they have more, but the other scent that I have is called Show Dog. And this one's Blue Ribbon. And it smells so good. It smells so good. Huh. Who I wish we had smell of it. <laughs> and I'll pick the scent, you know, like that I uh, just put a little bit on it. I don't put a lot. I'll pick the scent. I don't know that I'm just vibing with that day or the dog's personality. I don't know. I just like these. Oh, it smells good. It smells good. Paw cool. fume. Follow them on Instagram. Cool. They, they, um, um, they, um, I forgot what I was going to say. But it's grooming finishing spray, and it smells delish. Cool. It's not obnoxious. Smell. I'll have to check that out. I'm going to try their shampoo, and I'll get back to you guys on that. And I'll give okay. you an uh, review. But I do like that. I do. I like that. What else? What about the stuff? You have the stuff? I thought you were going to it. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah. I didn't know if you have it. So <clears throat> a friend of mine told me about this. Um, I guess a lot of groomers use this. To sort of the bottles a little. Uh, this is called the stuff. You've been using and, it, huh? Yeah. Um, so especially like long hair dogs or dogs that get mats and stuff, this is really good. After you wash them, you spray some on, like especially the parts under, like under their ears. Denise, you're frozen. What happened? Denise, she's frozen. Is everyone else still there? Is it my end or Denise's end? What happened, Denise? Am I here? You're a little. What happened? Hello. Are you there? I'm here. <laughs> Your lips are not matching up with the sound. <laughs> Hello, hello. What happened? Okay. I hope that everybody can hear me. 
I'm just going to talk about this and then hopefully Denise's connection gets better. Um, so you spray this on when they're wet, comb it through their hair and it helps to condition the coat, shortens grooming time. It re helps to remove, uh, Undercoat repels dirt, dust, and urine. Forms. We lost Denise. Did we just lose Denise? I don't think I can bring her back on either. Where is she? Denise! All right, let's see. Um, finish this up. So, pH controlled, non toxic, hypoallergenic. And for all breeds, long and short hair. So the stuff for dogs. And they sell it in a little pump spray one, and they also have a refill bottle um, of that. I see that you're back, but it's not letting me add you. Bring Denise, hold on, here we go. Okay, so the trick with bringing you back, you had to comment in order for me to bring you back. I, when uh, I just pressed on that you were watching, I couldn't bring you on. You had to comment. Ooh, thank God I commented. Are we good? We're good. Yes. Okay. Um, and then another, this is another product that I use in the winter here. But Love it. I believe it says that you can use it for the heat too this helps yeah this is a wax coating that you put on the dog's paws in the winter and it keeps them from freezing and it also helps to protect them from like this road salt and stuff and this is amazing i have had you know we have really cold winters here so it gets really really cold and what will happen is you'll see if you take a dog out for a walk they their paws will start to freeze and they start lifting them they'll just hold them up like my my damn foot's freezing i can't take it you know they'll hold them up <laughs> and so you can see i mean they can't talk to me but i can tell that they're cold when you use this you don't have that they don't lift them like my little dog mac you know he lifts his feet even when it's not that cold his feet like get cold or whatever but you use this stuff and um i think it says that you only have to apply it like a couple times a week or something but when it's really cold i use this before every walk so i line everybody up right in front of the front door and i slather it on their feet every single one of them and then off we go um it's a little messy when you first put it on. So you don't want to be like in your living room, putting this on and then having the dog walk all over your wood floors and your carpets. When it first, when you first put it on, it's messy. So, you know, like that front door mat, you'd be okay with that. Um, or you might want to put down some sort of towel or something while you put it on them and then just head out. But have you tried this at the beach or anything? I have that, and I put it on the dogs before they go swimming. Oh, you do? Cool. Yeah. I yeah, love that stuff. It's supposed to work, like, to, to help prevent them from, like, burning on the hot asphalt and stuff, too. Mm -hmm. So the hot at the sidewalk gets really hot. Or I know going to the beach is difficult because when you walk from the car to the beach, it's so hot. And, you know, you can't walk it barefoot. And the dogs, obviously, they're going to be burning up. But if you use this, it should um, help them. And it's like, it's a food-grade wax. So even if they eat it, it's not going to hurt them. Um, and my dogs don't really, from what I remember, I don't remember them licking it a lot. They don't really mess with it. We put it on and leave, and then they forget that it's on there. Um, and it soaks in and lasts. So... Um, yeah, you can also use in a pinch, you can use like Vaseline for the cold. So if you don't have any of that, you can like put Vaseline on their feet and go. But Vaseline is a petroleum product and you really don't want your dog like eating that. It's not necessarily the healthiest to have on their feet. So 
it's okay sometimes, but I wouldn't want to use it all the time. Um, you got anything else? Yeah, I'll go. I'll run it through quickly though, because yeah. we've been on an hour and a half. Really? My sneeze. My and I still got crap. a bunch of crap here. <laughs> We'll go, we'll we'll go, go through past. it. We don't have to show like, all of that. My favorite know. dog tags. Oh, those are so cute. Scratch my The head. reason is because they're thick. Like, they're really, really etched in. Like, this is this is fine crafted. They're not cheap. Yeah. Great, great, great thing about this company, which is Fetching Tags. Yeah. Fetching Tags on Facebook and Fetching Tags. Fetching, like, go play fetch. Yeah. And then um, fetching tags on Instagram as well. So. Aw, that's so cute. I scratch my butt. And then it says Bella on the back. You can customize You can customize these. Cute. And they give back to rescue. So if you do adopt and you show them your paperwork that you adopted, they give you a discount for adopting and they do give back to rescue, which is why I love them. Cameron told me about them. Cameron and them put those on the dogs. I like these um, for you guys local in um, Orlando, but they do ship um, lavender menace bandanas, and they put the the dog name on it. They're gorgeous. Okay. And they go on the collar. Cool. I love their stuff, and I like the way that they embroider. That's nice. I really like that. They will ship to you. I think even for free. I think. Last time I checked, they had free shipping. Cool. It's lightweight, you know, so. Uh, I'll show you Max this. Piggybacking is my specialty because he was a humper. <laughs> and then his uh, name on the back, Max. Aww. What is that in the oh, middle there? Me. Is it like a little paw print or what is that? I can't see. Uh, little Under... paw print I chose for him. Oh, that's cute. Bella has a heart, and I chose a paw print for his. And let me tell you how how durable they are. Cause this this was in the bottom of the pool, sitting there before I found it. Nothing happened to it. Okay. Huh. So, cool. um, that's all I have. I mean, I like I, I found this for anybody who has little guys. I got that at Marshall's, this little uh, floaty um, device for little dogs. I got, I get my slip leads, some of them from either Mendota or dog.com. This one's from dog.com. I like that one, how it has that leather. Can you show like up at the, where, yeah, that. It's really nice, heavy stitching yeah. and everything. Yeah, these are still on really, really good, like still tight. This one is a $30 Luca, Lucas Agnew line, dynamic leash. That's the one that I have in my How to Swim Your Dog video. It's really loose now, but I just love this line. Don't expect to run through this through your hand quickly or you'll burn your hand. Yeah, I, do I love that too. Blue. Mine's blue though. I didn't get to pick. Did they give you a color mm -hmm. choice or you just get whatever color? No, I did. I think I did this color choice. I think they only have red and blue. It's a love hate relationship with the slip lead. I love it, yeah. and it's just like for some other things, I have to grab another one. Yeah, it yeah. Is. I have that too. I like it. It's good. This I, I have, have the um, what's that? All oh, the Dremel. This is the Dremel that I use. So when I do the dog's nails, a lot of times uh, clippers. Dogs have had bad experiences with clippers, and the clippers are also kind of like, uh, I don't want to say like traumatic to their, um, but it does. It like squeezes the nail, and this doesn't. So this is the cheapest, I think it's the cheapest Dremel you can get. 20 bucks. I got this at Walmart, and it's the Dremel 7300. It has high and low. And that's low and that's high. And I had, we have a Dremel that plugs in, but that is like way more powerful and it's louder. So I really like yeah. the small, cheap, like 
cordless one. You recharge the batteries. Um, and that's what I like for that. And then these are the nail clippers that I use. So I do clip nails if they're really long. Um, and I like these. They're top paw. Top paw clippers. And I think I got these at PetSmart. Um, um, they stay really can sharp. I that's why I like them. They stay super sharp. And they also have this little guard on the back. So you can only put the nail in so far. Yeah. But I really like those. Okay. <laughs> you, um, I wanted to ask you about the Dremel. How do you feel about the ones that have like a guard? You know, how has a Dremel inside of, you know, has a, a, a like yeah, some like kind of that petty pause thing or whatever it is. Yeah. How do you feel about that guard? Like, what is that? I mean, is, is I don't think you need to guard. I think take it off. <laughs> you really don't need the guard. Yeah. I mean, what is it there for? It's just like an encase, encasement. I think people are afraid to use the Dremel because they're afraid that they're going to like, do something that it's going to be scary for their dog or whatever but um you know you when you use the dremel you don't just hold it on like i don't just turn it on and just like hold it on the dog's nail and push down real hard a lot of times i'm like tapping it as it's going and like moving it around a little bit so it's not on one spot just like burning you know if you just press and hold on one spot it gets hot especially if it's on like the higher setting it will get hot right there so you kind of move it around a little bit and um then it's not as it doesn't get as hot and stuff for the dog um yeah but you really don't need a guard and that thing is also really huge it's like i think the the sanding wheel is probably about this big and like this big around so it's way big in comparison with this you don't need that that thing yeah. is going to cost you a lot more money i mean it'll work <laughs> you can you can make it work but you don't need to spend that much you can just spend like yeah. bucks and um i just was wondering it. if it, what's the purpose of it if it's just to keep the nail keep you steady in one area and not go like you know i don't, I don't know. know me neither I mean, you need to know which part of the nail that you want to Dremel down. That's yeah. a big thing. And so, like, the dog's nail is shaped like this, right? So, when we cut dog nails, usually you cut, like, if this is the bottom of the dog's paw, they will cut even with that, like this. Like, you'll clip it even with the, dog, the bottom of the dog's paw. But there's also this kind of front section here. So when I Dremel the nail, I'm Dremeling this bottom, but then I'm also Dremeling this front side here. So I do the bottom, but I also try to get this front part. And you can really see like the quick, when you look at it, when the dog is, you know, you're holding the foot, you can see the quick there. And I go all around the quick and I do just like tap the quick. If the dog, once the dog starts to kind of pull away a little bit, I don't go any further on that part. You know, I'm like sensitive to how the dog is feeling about it. Um, but, and that's what's nicer about the Dremel is you're not going to cut that with nail cutters, you know, clippers, you can, if you're not, if you can't see the quick, you can cut them. So like on the black nails, it's more difficult. That's why you need to kind of know where the quick is and um, like cut even with the bottom of the paw. You don't want to, you don't want to like go up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you're going to, it's going to be bloody. <laughs> um, but I just like the Dremel better. It's easier. It's better. You have to kind of condition the dog to it. You have to like make it more of a positive experience for them. And then once they, once they know what it is, they all seem to like it better than the Clippers. So anyway, 
That's the Dremel. Um, what else you got? Um, I have uh, the leashes too. Like I, I said, the men, the Mendota. I have a really small. This is a really small four foot thin. I like the thin slip lead. So it, it's pretty thin. You wouldn't want to use this on a humongous dog. I mean, medium size and small size dogs are fine with this. Um, but yeah, they'll fall apart on you. Yeah. And you just want to watch that. Like you have to watch that these, like this leather will slip down eventually if you're not paying attention and it's glued. The, the rope is glued in here. And then it has this little sleeve that's slid up and so tight. So Denise says those dog.com ones are better. These are the regular leashes that I use. I've used these for years on my dogs before I was ever training dogs. Lupine leashes. Um, Lupine, like most decent pet stores, sell this brand. It's guaranteed for life, even if your dog chews it. So the collars, Whoa. they chew it. You take it back to the pet store and they'll give you another one. Or you can send it to Lupine and they'll replace it for free. Um, so Very leashes, nice. Like I've had several of the leashes that just get really old and ratty and crappy. And, and the pet store will take it and give you a new one. So that's really nice. Um, and I've never had any trouble with the clips. Like I know a lot of leashes, the clips you know, will unclip while you're out in town or something will happen or whatever. I've never had, never, knock on wood, where's some wood, <laughs> uh, never had a problem with the clips. So this, the, this one goes like this and they make these leashes for different size dogs. This is a really short, like one foot traffic thing or two foot traffic lead. Um, but I just like them, like the handles. I like the feel of them. And something that most people don't know is that every dog that comes through here, I use, like when I'm doing my prong collar introduction and stuff, mm -hmm. I actually use the leash that belonged to my dog, Princess, who we had for almost 12 years. And I like introduce all the dogs to the prong with her leash and um, I don't know, maybe it's like a little, you know, superstitious, like all trainers are a little weird about something like that where they do something a certain way or they have a certain leash that they love or whatever. And um, that's one that I use, I use it on almost all the dogs. So even though they have their leashes, I like to use that one particular leash and it's old and kind of ratty. It's one of those lupine ones. And um, that one, I think, is a six-foot lupine. And uh, I won't replace it because it was my, my dogs. And anyway, <laughs> so. It's like a good work thing. Here you go. It's like passing, passing her on. She helps me dog. with all the training dogs. So I think that's beautiful. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, most people don't know that. <laughs> um, so anyway, that. Um, and then collars, like, I mean, none of my dogs have this particular collar, but if you're looking for a new collar for your dog, this is, I think it's from Chewy, Frisco brand. I think it's their brand. This is a Martingale collar. I buy and have some of these collars here for the training dogs. These are, Martingale just means that it has this extra piece on the side here. So when your dog is wearing it, the leash clips on here, it tightens. So if you have a regular flat buckle collar, it doesn't have that, dogs can slip it. They can back out of a collar and get away. So, uh, Martingale is nice, and um, it keeps them from backing out of it. And this brand, this particular Frisco brand, is cheap. 
this collar might have been like four dollars or something and it's to me it's really good quality for what you're getting um this is a good idea if you have a dog that needs to be on the long line and you're doing some e-collar long line work this is a good thing to to have to clip on so they're not going to get away from you so hey christy oh i'm glad that you're enjoying um you're enjoying hearing about our favorite items if you have any favorite items share away we'd like to know yes. what, you, what you like using too um and then i think the only real other thing i have is i like uh the antlers for dogs to chew on this is a half a one i have some that are whole um and here's a little one that moose had he was littler um size matters <laughs> Yeah, Size yeah if you don't want to give a big dog like a little tiny one like this, they will swallow it and choke on it. But so you want it to be uh, kind of appropriate for the dog and the dog size. Um, and then the only you didn't bring your did you have your balance stick? I have mine here. My what? Your balance disc. Oh yeah. For the puppy. Yeah, right here. So this is good to work on, like if you need a dog with confidence building or something like that. This inflates and it's kind of wobbly. They, if you get them to stand on here, it's a different surface. It has like nubs on this side and nubs on this side. And you can get these specifically for dogs, ones that are like bone shaped and everything. That's not, the one I have is not. Um, so Christy likes the paw mark. Snap together prong for older arthritic clients has been a godsend. Okay, cool. Yeah. I have like I five of these, but they're for humans, but they work just as well for the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically the same thing I have. Um, and Paige likes bully mm -hmm. sticks. Um, mm -hmm. I have not tried the paw mark snap together prong. I have made some prongs using like a leash clip and cutting and modifying the prong collars, but it's good to know. I'll have to check out those paw mark. Um, are they like a buckle? Like, is it a buckle like this, Christy? Sounds like it. It sounds like it. I've seen some people uh, make shift you know, with the buckle of your of your flat buckle collar, you know, that black piece that you have? People sticking yeah. the prongs on there, but then there's no security to to the prong. I've seen people make shift huh. that. Now, that's not okay. necessarily the same. Not to give, uh, but I want to see those, that paw mark one. I want to yeah, see well, that. Yeah, we'll check Definitely. those out. What about mm -hmm. the, um, the Primo pad, Denise, before we end this? Do you have one? Yeah, I was going to leave that for last since it's on the floor. Okay. Um, and leather and metal buckle, she said. Nice. And then the only other thing I have is muzzles. This is a Baskerville muzzle. So this is pretty much a general purpose muzzle. Uh, if you, and I almost recommend that everybody muzzle train their dog. It's a good idea that dogs are comfortable wearing these no matter what, because your dog could be injured and need like medical procedures or whatever. It's nice for them to actually want to wear the muzzle rather than just having to be forced to wear it. Um, so these are pretty cheap. They're not that expensive. You can get them at almost any pet store. Uh, Baskerville muzzle, you want to make sure it's the right size for your dog. And um, they have this extra strap that clips up here. Um, and holds this on your dog's head. So if you really have like a dog who does not like wearing this, this strap is going to keep it on their head. But like my dog Lana wears a muzzle a lot and I do not have this uh, attached. Maybe that's stupid, but you got to just know your dog. Like if I'm working with a new dog that needs a muzzle, I probably am going to keep this on. Um, but that's Baskerville. And then the other muzzle is the Jaffco brand muzzle. And this is like a PVC type plastic. Um, 
it's softer and I really like that they have a felt in here. This is like felt lined on the top of the nose. So it's much less um, abrasion. The, the Baskervilles, if the dogs are wearing them a lot, you might have to wrap this bar and this bar with moleskin or duct tape or something because this will rub on the top of their uh, right here and they'll get uh, sores. So mm -hmm. Jaffco, it's a little softer. Um, and it only has this one strap. So you really have to make sure that these are fitted to the dog. Pretty exact. Um, these are not as, as good because it's, it's not as open, so they can't get as much air. Like when dogs wear these, a lot of times it fogs up in here. So they can pant, but it's not as easy as panting in the Baskerville. And this allows for like drinking and eating. You can cut a hole in the front so dogs can eat and drink um, like a small round hole. Um, but it's still not as, you know, I've heard people say if it's a human aggressive dog, they're going to get your clothing with this and they can still like grab bits of skin through the Baskerville where they can't do that with, with the Jaffco. They can't, um, they won't be able to get you and get your clothes through that. So, um, I think that's about it. Just, uh, oh, the other thing, I had some zip ties. And I just wanted to say, like, if you have a dog that some of the cheaper wire kennels are really flimsy. So dogs can easily, like, push on them and get them to just collapse. In. So if you take some zip ties, and you can just get these at a hardware store, uh, Go all around the edge, like go along the top of the kennel and down each side in the front and zip tie a couple, you know, maybe four or five zip ties on the front and a couple on the back. And then uh, if you have a dog like with separation anxiety or something um, and they're likely to try to get out of the kennel, use some leash clips like this on the door. So the door has give to it but if you use and I use leash clips because this space here is small so if you've got two wires from the kennel it doesn't allow it to move very much if you use um if you use like a carabiner or something it still allows the door to move but if you try like these little leash clips that this part is small it will hold those two bars really tight together so that the door doesn't move. So that's um, that's it. I don't have anything else. <laughs> it's hard to keep a straight face with this guy snoring over here. He snores so loud. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's nine forty-five. We just went on for yeah. on and on well, forever. <laughs> um, for just to wrap it up, the primo pad. Um, the primo this is probably and... the most important thing. <laughs> yes. Keep the crates quiet. Keep the crates comfortable, especially for dogs who chew. This is the place cot that we use. It's on four legs. Four legs for pets. Um, you guys can refer to videos to see that. That's for people who don't know about them. Not everybody watches us. You don't know. These primo pads, I have them in all my kennels. It's a very thick pad, good for older dogs with arthritis, good for chewers. They, if you measure your kennel correctly and get the right size, they cannot lift this up and pull it out. It does come with free zip ties. You don't have to zip tie it down if you don't want to. The dog still won't pull the, the, the primo pad up unless you get the wrong size and you, um, it's ill-fitted. But this thing is like looks brand new, and it's not. It has some good old use. All kind of dogs, heavy dogs, scratchy, scratchy dogs, and they still can't they still can't break my pen. Easy to clean and uh, they don't stink. 
after like all they've been through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to I say have the least. them fairly new. I bought one fairly recently and I love them. So far, I'm very happy. Primopads.com from California. The guy's name is Greg. And uh, it has, you have to measure your, you have to measure your kennel. I'm going to put the, the thing in there. And um, like I said, that's an alternative for when your dog can't have bedding or you have a chore. Those but are I awesome. have to go. I have to potty everyone. Uh, they're starting to get a little, yeah, it's getting a little wobbly. Yeah. All right. Well, this was great. Thank you everyone for tuning in and sharing your products. If you're watching this on the replay and you have something that you love that you want to share, please leave it in the comments below. We'd love to see it. And we will see you all later. Hope everybody has a good night. Thank you, you guys. I'm pretty sure it was painful watching it live, but if you're on the replay, just fast forward. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye.